So now that we've talked about what makes a good article, I think it'd be helpful to examine uh, how the same concept, cigarette taxes, is presented in two articles and try to see why one makes a better article for your IA uh, than the other. So pause this video and open up the articles in the description and read it first because it'll make it so much easier for you uh, to understand what I'm going to talk about. So the first article by desmoansregister.com is actually a pretty solid article. First, it's about a group that has proposed the government to do something, right? And things like this, they give you a chance to evaluate really well. Anything that a government does or may do has major effects that you can talk about. Also, it sticks to the syllabus. It's literally like an example right out of the market failure chapter in micro. It's a perfect and slam dunk example of the concept of negative externalities. And also, one thing I like to point out is the diagram is really good. The market failure diagram has shaded regions and it can be used to show effects on different stakeholders, right? So for example, like in the, di in the market failure diagram, uh, there's a certain region that talks about welfare loss, another region that talks about uh, how much consumers consume after the tax and so on. And one aspect I really like about this article is that it gives you a value on how much health cost is associated with smoking. And it also tells you how much money they will get from the potential tax. And since the cost outweighs the tax, you can show on your diagram that the tax doesn't completely cover the negative externality. Small thing, but useful. It tailors your diagram to the article. The article reports. It doesn't give its own opinion. It gives you all the facts. It tells you what's happening, but it doesn't analyze it. But more importantly, it has enough elements that can be used for evaluation. It doesn't just say the state plans to increase cigarette taxes. It gives you elements to analyze. And what do I mean by that? Well, remember class, what we were talking about earlier? Well, from the article, I can discuss at least three different components of class. The first thing we can talk about is assumptions. A tax is supposed to reduce consumption, but since cigarettes are addictive, right, they're inelastic, it may not reduce it as much as the government hoped. So therefore, real world and theory is not in sync with each other. And also it has short term and long term effects. In the, in the short term, it can help smokers stop uh, smoking because they may not afford the double increase in tax. And we know that since most of a ta most of a cigarette pack is made up of taxes, this is going to be a significant price bump that people may not initially be able to afford. However, in the long run, informal markets develop. And how do we know this? Because if they implement the tax, as the article says, the state will be more expensive than the national average of cigarette tax. And if this makes their cigarettes very expensive, people will rather buy cigarettes from across the state and cross state lines to buy cigarettes where it is cheaper. And in the long run, these informal markets, these black markets develop and it doesn't solve the problem long term. It also affects a variety of stakeholders. For example, in terms of the government, $106.4 million are brought in from the tax. And this is especially useful because currently, as the article says, the government is facing budget cuts. So this might help them upset that. And also the tax can be used to fund merit goods. Currently, there are $1.28 billion in costs associated with cigarettes. That's a big number, right? And this can be used to reinvest in the economy, stimulating it and leading it to longer term growth. It affects the public there will be less smokers and therefore less secondhand smoke. And also the article talks about how 19,000 youth will never be, will never become smokers and 22,000 adults might quit. So obviously the tax has really good benefit in those cases. However, for the smokers, smoking is addictive. So for those who cannot break their bad habit, they'll keep on buying and the tax will reduce their disposable income. Thus their standards of living will decrease. And the best part about this is that what you can do is you can prioritize all these arguments and conclude by showing which point should the government most consider and which ones aren't as important. You notice how all the points in my evaluation are supported by the article. That's an article you want. You don't want to just talk about informal markets developing because it's a point in your textbook, but because the article gives you an indication that it might happen. That's a good article. It molds your evaluation, your analysis, heck, this one also applies to your diagram. Now, I'll give you an article that you shouldn't use for your commentary, and this is by stuff.co.nz. So if you examine this article, you'll notice that this isn't an article that reports. It's an article that gives you a ton of opinions on smoking. It already starts evaluating claims by the government. 
it says that it is claimed to be the most effective method and then gives a string of statistics that show that it hurts lower income groups more and how the tax is unfair. And you'll notice that the writer already shows his viewpoint to all this and he already shows his stance. The article is about how taxing cigarettes is a bad idea and it blames the government quite a bit for it. It also shows the inefficiencies of the tax system. It already gives you the cons. It starts by citing past studies about how smokers are paying too much and it co and I quote, the ongoing increases cannot be justified on the basis of public health costs. It also, it answers the main question, whether the tax is effective or not under the heading, does tobacco tax reduce smoking? Which literally, that's kind of what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to figure out based on the data, whether the tax is effective or not. And she does this by saying how it's addictive and it's, and I quote, a very high cost to those who haven't been able to give up. This cost is given little attention in policy advice to ministers. And then she takes the cake by suggesting a totally new solution, which includes giving support to groups that help people to quit smoking. So you can see it does most of the evaluation, right? From class, it talks about which stakeholders it affects, such as the government, the lower income people, the taxpayers. And it also shows that in the long run, the tax isn't working. It even weighs it all out and gives you a conclusion. This does not fit our basic definition of a good article and won't be a good choice for you to use in your IA. So hopefully you can see that all you need is an article that fits in our definition. A good article is a news article that reports on an event which has significant economic consequences. If you can keep that in mind, I'm sure it'll make your article searching much easier. And now really quick, just for fun, but still quite useful, don't do this article. You'd have to evaluate why donkey skin is a good or bad idea for a tariff. And honestly, do you really want to take that route explaining the examiner why donkey skin is a good or bad idea? Remember, perfect slam dunk fit of the concept you want to talk about. Take care guys, follow me on Insta at IBLikeCole, hope this helped.